Hello, my name is Ryan, and today I'm excited to introduce you to the Buster Beagle 3D MK4 injection molding machine. It's the fourth model in a series of DIY injection molding machines that now include a fully automatic machine. How is this different from previous models, and how does it work? Well, let's find out. The MK4 machine at first looks very similar to the MK3 version of the machine, and that is because it reuses the main structure of the MK3 machine. You can even use the MK3 frame of the machine to make an MK4, but I'm showing a few differences here with my machine. If you saw a few of the videos I came out with at the end of last year, you would have already seen that I released the MK4 chamber as well as a pneumatic vise for the machine. I won't go over everything I went through in that video, but the main takeaway is that the MK4 and MK3 chambers are very similar except for one difference, and that is that the nozzle of the MK4 chamber threads onto the chamber itself, rather than the MK3 chamber that has a nozzle that bolts on with three screws. The MK4 is a better and more leak-proof design, and the other thing it allows is the optional extension add-on to increase the volume of the machine to five cubic inches. So that's why this frame is a little different than the standard MK3 frame. It's slightly taller to account for the extra space needed for the longer chamber and plunger. The other difference is that the pneumatic cylinder had to be taller for the plunger, as well as the linear rods that hold on the triangle plate. So now I'm gonna kind of go from the top down and describe everything that is happening with this machine. First, we have the SC100 by 300 pneumatic cylinder that I just mentioned sticking out of the top of the machine to push the plastic through the chamber. Next to that, we have a new enclosure for the PID controllers, and you will notice that I am now running three of them. The top PID controller now runs the top band heater of the machine. One of the cool new things about the chamber extension for the MK4 machine is that each extension has a thermal couple hole, so you're able to create heating zones if you like with the machine. So I have that top PID controlling the top band heater. The middle PID controller controls the band heater closest to the nozzle of the machine. The last PID controls the heat cartridge inserted into my mold themselves to make sure that they are preheated for the shots. In the front, we have the brains of the machine, which include the Arduino Nano that controls the automation. I will come back to that in just a moment. On the left side of the machine is a 3D printed pellet feeder that I use with a large water bottle as my pellet reservoir. There is a 3D printed auger inside that is turned by a worm gear motor mounted to the back. I also use a Red Bull can on the inside of the machine to make sure there was a smooth movement on the auger, as well as a 608 bearing to keep everything centered. A small piece of PVC feeds pellets into the chamber funnel. So moving back to the Arduino, I'll talk a little bit about how this machine works, which will describe some of the other components of this machine. When you first turn the machine on, you will see a screen pop up with the menu of options to control it. First, you may set the injection time, which is the number of seconds that the plunger will hold down when injecting your part. You will also hold it down for long enough for the part to slightly cool to prevent sinkholes in your part. Next, we have the vise hold time. This is how long the vise will stay closed after the shot to allow for further cooling of the part. After that, we have the hopper time. This is how long in seconds the motor of the hopper will turn and dump pellets into the chamber. Then of course, we have the number of parts that you want to make. Scrolling down, we have the cycle pause time. This is the amount of time you want to wait after the mold is open before beginning the next part. Below that, we have an item called manual run injection. What this does is manually turn on the plunger for however long you push down the rotary button on the machine. It will also automatically record the time that you hold that button down and change your injection time to that time. So this is the way of testing and setting that injection time. Below that, we have the manual run hopper. This button works the same way as the injection time, but now you are running the motor for the pellet feeder to see how long it takes to refill your chamber. 
This number is also recorded and set in the hopper time in the menu after you use it. After that, we have the start button on the machine to run your job. After you start the job, the Arduino will remember your settings for the next time you start your machine. It actually writes it to the memory of the Arduino. If you want to go back to the original settings of the Arduino, you can also click on the reset and it will go back to the values programmed in the code. In addition to the switch on the top of the box, that will turn off the power to the relays which control the pneumatic switches and pellet motor, there is also a red button on the front of the machine that will automatically stop all processes running with the machine. Once you hit start, the Arduino will send a signal to the 12 volt electronic pneumatic valve to close the vise. There is a magnetic hall sensor attached to the vise itself that is checking to see if the vise is closed before proceeding. This works by sensing a magnet attached to the roller bearing on the vise to make sure that the vise is closed. If it does not sense that the vise is closed, it will not proceed. Next, the hopper will release a small amount of pellets into the chamber to help create a seal for the plunger so it's not immediately touching the hot plastic. After that, it will send a signal to the 12 volt electronic valve that controls the plunger. The plunger will enter the chamber for the amount of time you have set in the program. There is another hall sensor here for the plunger. It's right here attached to the linear rods that hold on the triangle plate. Now the reason for this sensor is to detect the amount of pellets you have in the machine. There are small magnets attached to the nut at the top of the plunger. If those magnets pass by the sensor and do not stop, then the program will lengthen the time of the pellet feeder to add more pellets. If the magnets never reach the sensor, then it knows there are too many pellets in the machine and subtracts times from the pellet feeder. If the magnet stops at the exact right spot and are in contact with the sensor for more than five seconds, then the time of the pellet hopper will not change at all. Now, if you happen to not hit that sensor at all for three cycles, then there will be an error that pops up to ask you to manually check the hopper to see if there's an issue. Right under that sensor, you will see I have a fan. It's simply there to help cool the plunger down between shots to help keep the plastic from sticking to it. The plunger will then retract and hold the vise closed for the amount of time you have listed in the vise hold time. Once that time is up, the vise will open revealing the part. The Arduino will send a signal to the 12 volt electronic valve to run the ejector pin sequence to remove the part. The part will fall into the chute at the bottom of the machine where it passes by an optical sensor that will record whether the part has cleared of the machine. If for whatever reason the part is not detected and still in the machine after 10 seconds, then a servo motor will turn on and try to manually clear the part. If everything goes right, then the machine will continue to the cycle pause and then move on to the next part in the cycle. And that's it. That's pretty much how the entire machine runs an automatic cycle. Now I'm gonna open the brains of the machine and try to explain how it all comes together. I'll also be releasing a diagram that shows how all of this is connected, but I'm going to try to briefly explain what's going on here to make it look a little easier and, and explain as I know that the diagram may seem a little bit daunting. First, we have an AC to DC buck power supply coming into the box. This takes the 120 volts of power directly from the PID controllers and converts that into something to power the Arduino and motors. This converts 120 volts AC to 12 volts DC power. That 12 volts then splits into two where it goes to both a kill switch and then powers a 12 volt four channel relay module. That relay module controls the electronic pneumatic valves for the vise, plunger, and ejector pins for the machine. It also controls the worm gear motor for the pellet feeder. The other half of the 12 volt goes to yet another step down converter that you see here. The reason is that the 12 volts is still too much power to control an Arduino so we have to knock it down a little further. In this case, I'm converting 12 volts DC to seven volts DC. For the purpose of the layout in the enclosure, I have this board upside down so it looks like OL, but that's just 7.0 upside down. You wanna make sure that you set this converter to step down to seven volts before you connect it to the Arduino as you don't wanna power that up with too much voltage. After that, it's just a matter of following the diagram to hook up all the wires and the machine should run. 
It does require the ability to know how to load code onto an Arduino Nano, but that may be a topic for another video. I may even start selling some Arduino Nanos with the code preloaded on them, but it'd be a good thing to know how to do it if there are improvements in the code and you may want to update to something else in the future. There is a port access in the side of the enclosure to be able to make updates to the code. So that's pretty much it for how all of the electronics work. Other notable things you may have seen is that I have three regulators for each of the pneumatic cylinders on the machine. That way I can control the amount of pressure each one uses. I also learned a neat trick from iBuildStuff in the Buster Beagle 3D Facebook group who told me about adding wires to the bottom of the chamber to kind of make sure that the nozzle is always centered in the mold. It's a nice insurance policy to make sure that the chamber never veers off its intended target. He also mentioned that the bands may have a tendency to burn out faster if they cover the flat areas on the chamber as that would mean that they are floating over air, so it may be a good idea to move them up or down to avoid those flat empty spots. You might have also noticed that I added an LED strip into the machine that I connected directly to the 12 volt output of the buck converter just to make everything easier to see. Not a required upgrade, but I like it. I also added a little clip on rear view mirror just so that I could see inside of the mold to make sure I could keep an eye on what was going on inside of the machine. I also decided to purchase some 25 millimeter bore shaft collars. And the reason for this is that I wanted to limit the amount the vise opens. This helps with the amount of air pressure that it uses. It works as a spacer on the pneumatic cylinder that prevents the vise from pulling back further. Another thing I added to the vise was a one-way air check valve. The reason for this is I wanted to make sure that the vise never lost pressure even when the pneumatic cylinder for the injection turned on using the same air supply for both. I'm not sure it's 100% needed, but it certainly couldn't hurt. Lastly, I added a small bracket to the bottom of the part chute at the bottom of the machine. I attached a little metal business card to the bracket, but it could be anything. It has a counterweight on the bottom of the outside to make sure the door stays closed. The reason for this is that the part was falling too fast for the optical sensor, so this door slows that down to make sure the sensor has time to read it. I just wanted to point that out if you wanted to use that chute that I'm using. You may also need to adjust the sensitivity of the sensor to correctly read your part. Other than that, everything should be pretty self-explanatory. The build of the frame is the exact instructions from the MK3 frame build. The vice build has its own assembly manual with a video assembly as well. So adding the electronics, to include the Arduino with the automation is really the last piece of the puzzle for this machine, which I'll release the BOM, the Arduino code, the 3D printed parts, and wiring diagrams for. The last thing that you will need is the mold itself. The current part I'm running is a Maui fishhook mold I made. I had the blank for this mold created for me from PCBWay Online just to make sure it had all the components needed to line up perfectly and then I used my Commarker B6 fiber laser to engrave the design onto the mold. I may make another video going over that process soon as it's a super detailed and powerful way to make a mold without a CNC. I already made another video on the process using an X-Tool machine that you can see at the link above. With these parts, I ran a bunch of them and then foolishly switched the colors in the hopper without fully emptying it first, so I ended up with a lot of streaks of black in my white fish hooks. That's fine though, as I was planning on painting them gold, as it really makes the detail in the design stick out. Oddly enough, this fish hook design was one of the first reasons that I looked into injection molding in the first place. I would sell these fish hooks as Christmas ornaments on Etsy, but they were hard to print and I wanted a faster way to pump them out I will probably start dropping these into kits that I sell for the machine so you can see an actual part made with the machine. So that's it. I hope you guys are as excited about the upgrades to this machine as I am. This has really come a long way since the original MK1 version of the machine and I'm so interested in seeing how you guys out there make your projects with it. Now, just as a disclaimer, this is a DIY project that does come with certain hazards. You are dealing with high heat and pressure. 
you need to be very careful not to burn yourself on the heating components of this machine. The vise also creates about two tons of pressure, so you need to make sure you are keeping your hands free and clear from the machine while it's operating. You will also be dealing with both high and low voltage with this machine, so you need to make sure that it's something you're comfortable working with, and if you're not, then consult with someone who is. None of this should be scary, but you do want to keep safety in mind when building a machine like this to prevent injury or worse. I also want to point out that I'm absolutely not a programmer, so the code was written with the assistance of ChatGPT, Google searches, and just sheer will. If you see any improvements that could be made, feel free to share those with the community, as those improvements may help out others as well. If you like this video, please click that like button and consider subscribing for more content on injection molding, laser engraving, and all things Maker. If you are interested in knowing more about these machines, please also consider joining the Buster Beagle 3D Facebook group, where there are many members who share ideas and help and are really the catalyst for the advancements that have been happening with these machines over the years. Thanks again, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.